It's like that. You missed the, all the hand waving. And yes. Well, yeah, that's, they're so, not here. Yeah. Don't come here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's kick it off. These four parts look exactly the same, <laughs> but they're slightly different. We have four terminal blocks to mini USB. This is a socket mini USB. And then we have the micro USB. And then you just go through these really fast. I'll just show them because they're, yeah. they're, they're impossible to tell unless you, you um, have them. You have all four types. We yeah. have socket, plug, and we have mini and micro. So maybe you can go to the overhead when you're going through them all. Okay, so focusing. I'm focusing, yeah. There you go. Um, okay, so this is like a mini B socket. So yeah, you see this mini B. And then if you have a mini B plug, like this one from the other side, this plugs in. Ta-da! And it's broken out, and you get the ground um, shield pin as well. So that's why there's five. Sorry, you don't get the ground pin. You get the ID pin. So you get ground, which is also shield, data minus data plus, five volts, and ID. So if you're doing, you know, on-the-go stuff. So we have um, mini USB. And these are great because, like, they're chunky, but it's like the wiring is super easy. You don't need to solder. You can just wire directly to them. So this is the socket, and this is the plug. This is the mini B. And you can tell the mini, they have a little bit of a, a, a notch up here. And then this is the micro terminal. And these are also used sometimes for on-the-go sockets. So you can use them for, for both. And then, yeah, you get the plug type and the socket type. And then these can plug in together. You buy twins individually. And again, you get uh, ground, data minus, data plus, 5 volts, and ID pin. So you can make your own custom cables or, you know, sometimes you have like weird stuff you want to do with USB connectors. Um, it's a lot easier to do it with these terminal blocks. And also you can like probe them with your oscilloscope or your multimeter. Also kind of nice. So yeah, these are some very handy uh, micro USB terminal block breakouts and mini USB. Okay. Okay, we got these cute little buttons. I keep, okay, I kept seeing these buttons on projects. They're like soft touch. They're squishy. They're six millimeters, they're a little tall, but um, they've got like a soft touch to them. Ooh, soft touch. So um, yeah, if you go to the overhead, I can show them, they're very tiny. So again, they're, they're six millimeter, but you know, when you touch them, they don't, they don't go down very much, but they have a soft touch. They're not very clicky, um, but they have a nice feel to them. And they only have uh, two pads. I really gotta zoom in on this, because it's, it's just so tiny. There you go. You have two pads, and then you know, normally open, you press them and they connect. But yeah, it's very small. Um, so you'll have to surface mount solder these, not good for breadboards. And you get a pack of 10, because I figure if you're going to use these, you're going to use a lot of them. But I see them in some like, little mini game controllers or little mini game projects. Okay. Next up. Okay. Wires. These wires are connected to a T slot um, uh, opto. Uh, Sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? It's the uh, opto interrupter. So um, the, we have two versions of this sensor. We have one with wires, one has wires, and one without wires. So maybe can you skip ahead and then show the one without wires and yeah. we'll go back to the demo? I was going to say, when you first look at this, you're just like, what does this do and why would I possibly need it? But the video kind of explains it all, and so will the data. So, this is um, yeah. what these are tend to be used for. And you can use them for any kind of, you know, something is in the way of the slot. But particularly what we got these for is they're really nice for gluing or taping onto DC motors. And when you use our encoder wheel, which we stock in the store, you can then measure the RPMs, you know, how many ticks go by. So let me show this demo and also... Um, yeah, this is really handy for robotics, of course. This is great for robotics. Okay, so let me show... A bunch of these. Let me show the one without the wire first. And then I'll show the demo. Okay, so. Oh, man. Okay, this is um, the one of the. It's just easier to show because it's on wires. So this is an Omron uh, EESX672. You know, a little nicer than other optical clothes because you're probably like, oh, you know, you can get these for like 10 cents. But this is what's nice about these. First off, they've got these, it's, it's T slot style, so it's got these nice. Um, this nice flat area with mounting tabs, so you can attach it very solidly to the side of a motor, which I like. Um, and then, yeah, there's these two slots. There's an LED 
on this side and the sensor on this side. And so when the LED shines through, if there's nothing in the way, the sensor goes off. And uh, you know, if we put a, a PCB or something in the center, um, the sensor doesn't go on, like it doesn't get the light and doesn't turn on. Um, but it has a, it actually has a chip inside of it, it has some circuitry, so it's a little bit more advanced than just a simple LED and phototransistor. So there's power um, L out and minus. So you do need to power these with five volts, but as long as the power is five volts, you can use the signal at three volts. It's, a, it's just a pull up that you set to whatever voltage you want. And there's a nice little LED that will light up when um, the sensor is tripped or non-tripped. And the LED, the, sorry, the L pin, you can use that if you tie it to either plus or minus, it changes the polarity. So if you want it to, tr like if you want the output to be high when it's like blocked or when it's not blocked, you can select which way you want it basically. So it's a little bit more advanced than basic sensors. Um, this is it. So you can see it's, uh, there's this little nut, nut, uh, nub here. So I kind of taped it off a little bit to the side. And then these wheels have a little part that stick out and then you can put these encoder uh, um, wheels on them. And you can see there's, I think, 20 slots. And that's it's perfect. It, you just put this sensor, you can see it goes through. And then the LED will be um, turned, it will be blocked or unblocked depending on how the wheel turns. So let me put it this way for safety. And then if I plug this in, the demo should run. Okay. So, oops, I got this upside down. Hold on. Okay, so you got it running and it says, you know, it's, these, are, these motors are about 200 RPM, but if I stop them or slow them down, you'll see the RPM does update. I mean, you can update faster. My code just checks once a second. If I let it go, it'll go up to 200 RPM and you can see that wheel spinning. And then if I rotate this, you can kind of barely see it, but that um, LED, it will light up when it triggers. You can, it's tough because it's happening so fast, you can barely yeah. see it. But if you're using something that isn't rotating, you know, a thousand RPM, um, you will be able to see each tick as it goes by on the LED, which is another nice thing about these sensors. So um, this is really great for robotics whenever you have one of these wheels. DC motors, you know, the side effect of having a low cost motor. They're dumb. They're, they're <laughs> dumb, they're $2. They're dumb. And I remember doing a bunch of projects where I needed to, um, with Cricut and I was doing DC motors just to show DC motors and I wanted to have like, oh, I want this little trash rack, this trash pan to go down. And yeah. Up. Like we had these steppers for stuff like that, but this could allow you to do stepper like projects with the DC motor. Yes. You can have much more um, control, more precise control. Again, this is only one. It doesn't tell you the direction. It just tells you the speed, but that's still better than it's, nothing. It's still, you could still do more projects with this. Yeah. And this is just, really like. the code is even posted up. I, I think I did this in Arduino, but you can use this in circuit Python um, as well. Okay. Um, you do want to have a microcontroller that can read the pulses fast enough, but uh, I like these and yeah, I got them in, with wires. The wire is one meter long. It's, it makes for very handy wiring. You can see it's a very nice compact wire with all yeah. the cables coming out. Or you can get it with just these solder tabs that are very easy to solder to. It's a little bit less expensive. Either one will do the job just fine. Okay. Next up. Solenoid. Yeah, this is another one where you can, lots of different ways to do stuff with robotics, but if you got a solenoid, like... Saved this a is lot a, of time. This is a chunky this, solenoid. This type of movement normally is tough to do with robotics. And this so, is a very long throw yeah. solenoid. So, I mean, it's not like a foot, but it is like, you know, it's like an inch or so, which is quite a, chunk, a bit. A chunk, yeah. I will say that the trade off is um, this solenoid needs a bit of current. Um, it needs, I think we figured out like one or two amps. So, let's maybe go to the um, overhead. And I've got, uh, hold on, I've got my, of course I just, I just dropped this thing I needed. Hold on. Well, I'll go back to the video. Yeah. Okay. So I got this my five volt, two amp thing going on here. And then let me try triggering this. So plug that in, chunk, chunk, chunk. So it has quite a bit of throw. Um, you'll do, you do need to have a pretty strong transistor. I'm not actually sure you'll be able to, um, power this with a, uh, ULN because those are 500 milliamps and this really does want like one volt, uh, sorry, one amp at five volts. And it's, you know, it runs at five volts. It's not, uh, incredibly fast and powerful at five volts. It's a six volt 
driver, but you can ride it at six, um, seven or eight or nine volts and they'll be fine. But it's, it's a nice chunky solenoid and it's, it has that nice long throw and it's a push pull. And I wanted to have another alternative. We have a teeny five volt solenoid, but it, the throw is only, I think like five or six millimeters. So this is a much longer throw when you really need something to go much further. So there you go. Now I have a solenoid. Okay. Chunky. Next up. We still have more. Um, we got more particle stuff in. Nonstop. Okay, so now we have, this is the particle 2G, 3G um, mesh pack. So this is a starter pack, and it comes with two xenons, and those are the NRF52840 uh, mesh Bluetooth network, and then it has one gateway particle, the one in the center, which is like chunkier, and that one is, or the one on the right, and that's the boron 2G, 3G, so it's a cellular module attached to the NRF52840. So you have that uh, Bluetooth mesh or Bluetooth low energy capability. Plus it can act as a gateway to take your Bluetooth mesh data from the particle board, the lower cost ones, and upload it to the cellular network to the particle cloud. So if you have stuff somewhere where you don't have Wi-Fi or you know the Wi-Fi is inconsistent, or you just, you know, you think the password is gonna change and you want cellular, um, cellular works a lot of places. This pack kind of gets you started with everything you need. You got three breadboards, USB cables, comes with a tripler and of course uh, a battery. You'll need a battery for um, the stellar module, even if you have it plugged into USB. Um, those cell modules really need a huge burst of power that um, only a LiPo could really provide. USB doesn't provide as well, as well as a debugger programming a couple of parts. So this is good if you're um, interested in doing cellular mesh network particle stuff. And of course, um, all these are Feather compatible. We'll be getting more of them in the store as they come in uh, to stock. They're, they're really, you can tell that we're getting a little bit every week. Uh, we big, placed a big order and you know they come in little shipments. And as soon as we get them, we put them in. So this one is for 2G, 3G. If you need the LTE bundle, hold up. Maybe next week we'll get the LTE bundle. Um, but this one, you know, if you have a 2G or 3G network uh, for your cellular needs, this will work quite well. Okay, next up. JP requested this. It's pretty simple. It's a uh, stereo audio jack with a little knurled nut. You can panel mount it. And it's got this tab sticking out so it's breadboard compatible. I will say um, it's vertical style. We have a horizontal style. The tabs aren't super long. It does work in a breadboard, but like especially if you have this long cable sticking out, it can yank it out a little bit. So this is best used for perf boards and solderable breadboards. It does work in a solderless one. It's not great for it, but it does work. So you just plug it in and you get ground, left, right. Perfect for your audio project. You want to take a stereo jack and plug it in, but you want it to come in vertically. And next up, if you like the handsome Anthony from Apple, you'll like this. It's a circle. It's this white circle. <laughs> we have the white circle and we have we're the gonna, white rectangle. We're selling quarters. Can you show them the white rectangle? Look at this white we're rectangle. We're selling rectangles and, and circles. circles. We got both. It's the new, this, if you like apple cinnamon, toast you'll like <laughs> okay okay it's so, that time of the new products video so we have circles and, and rectangles what are these they, they okay. have to do something we're not just selling circles and rectangles are we uh, yeah we are i mean uh, like look at this like it's so white and clean points. and it's just the, the ui is just amazing yeah i mean there's nothing like that microsoft oval the, which was terrible it's the iphone 11. Okay. No, these are ntag um what are these these are ntag uh 203 Okay. Little mini tags and... What do they do? The, what do they do? Well, they actually don't do anything until you have um, an RFID board that can read NTAG, which is kind okay. of the standard. All right, I'm going to go to the other end. Yeah, I'll show these. So this is a um, quarter size tag. It's a nice round tag. And you've got the large uh, you know, business card size tag. I'll say the business card tag has a bigger antenna. And you, we actually have a video where we uh, dissolved one of these so you can see the antenna is like huge. And with this one... The antenna isn't as big, so you know, use this if you're space constrained. Maybe you want like an RFID project that uh, doesn't have a, you know, the tag is embedded, but you don't want it to be too big. And this one, of course, will get you better range, so that's kind of nice if you have something that you, you want it to work, even if it's not right up against the reader. And these both contain an NTAG 203, and the NTAG 203 is kind of the next generation. We've had the MIFR Classics for a while that work with the um, PN532 and other RFID readers. But modern phones don't use them anymore. Um, licensing, who knows why. Um, basically, everyone decided to go to NTAG, which is a license-free um, method of doing RFID and NFC. Uh, so you, you, you're going to have a bunch of different shapes and sizes. 
they have 144 bytes of memory, so you can write a URL. You know, when you touch it to a phone, it goes to that URL, and you know, you can have NFC-based stuff or, or data transfer. Um, so I'll give it a couple more shapes of these. Wonderful. We started with the wonderful round white and wonderful white rectangle, but we'll have other exotic colors and shapes mm -hmm. coming your way for all your NTAG needs. Um, these do work with the PN532, but um, my for Classic does as well, and it's a little bit less expensive. All right. Speaking of tiny electronics and the code center was Tomu. And uh, that's, this is the code, yeah. Tomu. This is by Sean Cross. It's the project that he put on uh, crowdfunding at uh, CrowdSupply. It is a small uh, EFM32 Gecko processor, two little LEDs, and four tabs on the bottom for USB port. You can see it can only USB connector. And uh, two capacitive touch buttons, and it comes in a little plastic case as well, which I can show off. It's a little development board, has a USB bootloader. Um, it's kind of fun. It's like, you know, a little dev board that you can stick in your computer. It comes like this. Let me open this up. And it's open source, it's freely hackable. It's kind of sort of designed to be a U2F, a, a, a two-factor authentication dongle, but you don't have to use it for that. You can use it for anything. Um, and yeah, you can touch this pad here, touch this pad there for two inputs. There's two LEDs embedded in it. And then um, when you stick it in these USB pads, connect to the microcontroller and you can program it. And there's a free tool chain. These are kind of fun to hack. Um, it's very minimalist, but if you just want a little microcontroller, uh, this is like, it's smaller than the trinket. <laughs> it's possible. Uh, this is what we've got for you. And um, there's actually a new Kickstarter, there's not Kickstarter, a crowdfunding campaign on Crowdsupply uh, by Sean for the FOMU, which is the FPGA version of this, and we'll carry that as soon as that's available. Um, that's not this. This is the uh, EFM32 Gecko chip. Okay. I'll that for it. Almost there. The this BMP. one's easy. This one's a, we have an assembled version of the BMP280. Uh, some people have projects where they, um, or kits where they don't want to solder the headers on. We will solder the headers on for you. Uh, works just like the non soldered one, but it's fully assembled. Okay, this is almost in the store. This is a preview. This is Coming soon. The, so here's the thing. Uh, Grand it's, Central. It's not out yet. Yeah. Don't ask. Mega shaped. It's mega shaped. It's for people like 3D printers and just giant chips with tons of Maybe you just pens. want a lot of chips. This is the first... I think, you know, the Douay has been discontinued for the most part. Um, this is the Cortex-M4. If you want this, sign up, because that'll help us know how many to make. It's not out yet. Yeah. It will be soon. But for now, please sign up. And as okay. soon as it's available, you'll be notified. Getting closer. And then Getting closer. This is, um, sign up, it'll, this is about to go in the store. This is really about to go. We actually were about to put it in, and then we found a little bug in the bootloader, and we wanted to fix it. Just coincidentally, that's how it always works out. You always find a bootloader bug like the hour before you put it in the store. So I was just doing a bunch more like last minute testing and we just bumped into it. It's our Feather compatible NRI52 840 um, native USB. It runs CircuitPython. Hence that poster. Circuit. Hence the poster. <laughs> um, it's wonderful. Uh, we're we're going to reprogram the boards and we'll get them in the store for you. Uh, and we'll probably talk about this a lot more next week when we have it. Yeah, it's probably going to be one of our mo more popular products. Well, this is why we want to get it right. Yeah. I want to get this right. I don't want to release this. it. And the bootloader is really important because if the bootloader is good, you can use it forever. And if the bootloader has a bug in it, it can really hamper uh, people's developments. That's why I wanted to do a good job. So this is coming soon as well. But I promise you, very, very close. Okay. And with that... Thank you, everybody. New, 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 new.